Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and I'm back again to do another instructional books that you must own. And this one is a new one to me. I bought it in the last month, couple of months or so, and I finally took the time to get round to reading it as part of my Patreon study club. So I did a two hour stream for my study club guys where I was reading through this book, working through the materials in it, and helping those guys to see how I develop you know, books that I'm reading into practice routines for myself. And you know what? I absolutely fell in love with this book. So the book is The Cellular Approach by Randy Vincent. Now, this is the second book that I've got by Randy Vincent. The first one was Jazz Lines. I was very impressed by that. Really enjoyed working through some of that book. That was a gift, actually, from one of my patrons, Patrick. So thank you very much for that, my friend. Um, yeah, and I, like, as I say, I was so impressed with that, I thought I should get around to reading The Cellular Approach because I like Randy's writing style a lot. And you know what? This one absolutely blew my socks off. I'm really, really impressed with this. Now, we only spent about you know, two hours on this stream, and we got through about six pages of content. So we were really milking this for content. In essence, the thing that I absolutely love about this book, aside from it being written for guitar rather than for all instruments, there is a cheaper version of this, which is written for all instruments. But this one, he goes down and breaks the exercises into string sets and things like that, uh, which I'm sure I will talk about as we go on. So it's everything I want from a book. There's a decent amount of text, to musical examples, good explanations of things that are going on. Now, drawbacks for people are the fact that there's no tablature in it. And you find that with lots of high-end jazz books. The plus side, or not the plus side, but the, the saving grace to that is the fact that each of the examples is very clear on which strings you should be playing things. Again, though, I would prefer to see a tab version of this so it's more accessible to more people. Uh, but, of course, I worked through it without tab, so it's not necessary. But, you know, accessibility is never a bad thing, right? So, in essence, uh, as far as we went with the book, we're just dealing with small musical cells. So, an ascending cell of 1, 2, 3, 5, and a descending cell of 1, flat 7, 6, 5. Both musical phrases that you can play when starting on the root of a chord. Uh, and again, that's not the entirety of the book, but that's just the first concept. And it inspired me, it really inspired me and helped me to move into a land where I'm improvising with this stuff over uh, cycling dominant chords. So um, just for your reference, here's cycling dominant chords. Now, of course, that can go on all day. And they don't come up too often in improvisation. They don't come up too often in compositions. But if you're really into bebop like I am, these two chords per bar type chord progressions are extremely common. And outlining those chord changes is something that I have actually struggled with for a very, very long time. I can play over changes. You give me a bar per chord, not a problem. But I always found trying to express myself musically over these two, bar, uh, two chords per bar changes to be a lot, lot harder. And it's a combination of two things, having to think incredibly fast but also having to you know, musically connect melodies together. Now, I'm not suggesting that what I'm doing so far from this book is extremely musical content, but it is freeing me up when I play. So some of the first exercises in the book, you just take a combination of the ascending cell and the descending cell, and you move it through the changes. As I say, he breaks them down into string sets. Here's an example of me playing uh, the, the ascending and descending cell on the top two strings. It sounds like this. Now, the content that's not really covered in the book is just how to uh, fully expand this over the neck and to be able to improvise with multiple patterns. So in my study club stream, I broke down you know, the way that I would look at these cells and the way I would then develop them into possible fingering permutations and then the ways that I would explore these so I could stitch those together quite freely when I'm playing. And that's where I am with the book so far. So I can now confidently, reasonably confidently, confidently put on this chord progression and follow the changes using my ear when playing and I'm just just playing with these two melodic fragments at this stage but these are improvisations that I'm doing here where I'm stitching this stuff together these aren't pre-planned I'm just following the melody and trying some new fingerings out and yeah I feel 
I feel powerful. It's like the world's worst superpower. I'm able to play this stuff and listen and react. So um, here's an example of me starting lower on the neck. <laughs> And to demonstrate my point, here's the same basic concept, again, improvisation using these two melodic cells, but starting a lot higher on the neck. You'll notice that, of course, I'm playing over the same chord changes, but at no point am I ever playing the same thing that I've played before, because I'm improvising with this stuff. So that sounds like this. Now, of course, this book contains a whole lot more than that, and I haven't covered it all yet, but I'm going to take a look at the contents for you now, just to give you an idea of the content. I wanted to make this video now, rather than in a few months' time, when I've got a little bit further into the book, because I'm extreme. hopefully you can tell, I'm very passionate about this book. It's getting me excited, it's getting me inspired to play. We're just dealing in these cycles and 2-5 sequences, and uh, literally just root to root cycles to be fair. He does go on to demonstrate third to third cycles, third to fifth cycles, third to root cycles, connecting these ideas, um, uh, two five sequences, chromatic two five sequences, that's all chapter one. Then he goes into turnarounds, so standard turnarounds and adapting turnarounds. There's a ton of, you know, like Coltrane giant steps changes. Then we've got longer two five progressions, which I'm really excited for because that's the area that I'm reasonably good in now, but I'm really interested to see See how I can start using this cellular approach, these four note fragments, and stitching those together into making longer lines. Uh, chapter four is outside and free playing, so slide, side slipping, extending of consecutive side slipping up and down chromatically, stuff sequencing and moving up and down in thirds, and sequencing in fourths, tritones, combinations. Again, I read this and I'm like, can't wait to do that stuff. And then chapter five, more outside lines and all purpose licks, including chromatic in intervals, serial tone rows, and 23rd chords. I'm not entirely sure what 23rd chords means. Page 179, let's, let's get there. Let's find out. Oh, you're gonna find this one out with me. 179, 23rd chords. Oh, okay, yeah, I see. I see. He literally says, you might be wondering what a 23rd chord is. Ordinarily, the highest number we see in the chord is 13. He's talking about stacking root, 3rd, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, se uh, 17, 19, 21, 23. So it'll be stacking intervals until you get up to the 23rd. So there we go, 23rd chord. Something new for me. <laughs> I don't like the terminology, but it exists. So yeah, there we have it. Randy Vincent's The Cellular Approach. If you are into jazz, if you're wanting to expand your vocabulary and get yourself thinking and more importantly, hearing changes a lot better when you're playing, uh, cannot recommend this book enough. There is a link uh, below where you can purchase this on Amazon. It's an affiliate link, so I might get like 50 cents if you buy it via that. I really don't care. It's not about the money. Um, in fact, if, you, if you're if you okay with digital versions of the book, Premier Guitar Magazine, the, uh, you know, the magazine that I've been writing for for like five years or so, uh, they have a digital store and you can buy a PDF version of this book on there. So that'd be a great place to check it out. Again, I will post a link in the description if you are okay with digital books. That's a subject for another day. I'm Digital books I'm actually kind of cool with now and I wish I wasn't, but yeah, very cool. So there you have it, the cellular approach. And finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to these people over here. These are some of my supporters over on patreon.com. I mean, these guys pay for this book. And those study club guys and private lesson guys, you know, they pay for me to take that time out to do these big long streams where I can look at a book and get passionate about things. And now where I should be sat transcribing some Larry Carlton for a client of mine, these guys are the essentially the, the monetary force that allows me to go, you know what, I'm going to take some time off, I'm going to make a video, I'm going to edit a video, I'm going to render a video, I'm going to upload a video, I'm going to promote a video. So thank you so much, guys. Um, you know, I hope you guys are getting lots of stuff out of these videos, but more importantly, you are really helping people that aren't supporting me on Patreon to still get this great information. So thank you very much. It is most appreciated. And if you aren't a supporter on Patreon, say thanks to these guys these guys because <laughs> they're awesome um, if you would like to check me out on patreon you can do so 
by clicking this button up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here and you can check out two more of my videos here and here. Thank you so much for all the support guys and I will see you for another video soon. I'm gonna go and practice because I'm inspired. Hope you are too, Laters.